Greetings, fellow outsiders, and welcome back to the Cryptid Coffee House, where we left off last time. We had a cute little interaction with Artemis, and um, it looks like we've been texting on and off all week. Let's just get back into it. I'm excited. This is a cute game so far. You and Artemis have been texting on and off all week. They are a really cool person, kind of awkward and stilted at times, but they always have a lot to say and a lot to do, apparently. They weren't lying when they said they had a kajillion hobbies. You're not even particularly sure if they have a job or not. You often just hear about them being roped into things with Kuru and Kolia, about them and their new jigsaw puzzle fascination, about them going through uh, town, around town with a camera. They do so many things, it's almost hard to keep up with them all. Your schedule and their schedule are on opposite ends because of this. They're always up to doing things at ungodly hours of the night while you're trying your best to be productive during the day. Despite this, the both of you manage to ar uh, arrange a time to get lunch. This is exciting for you. You haven't really hung out with anyone new in a very long time. The last person you became friends with was Odina, and she's taken up all your time since you first met. Not that you're complaining, though, so you think it's going to be fun to get to know more about Artemis. The two of you plan to meet at Webb's uh, just a little afternoon, then go to this vegetarian restaurant Artemis suggested to pick food. There was talk of you two eating at the park, but you're not exactly sure if this if that's happening or not. It's a really nice day out today, so you don't think you'd mind if Artemis brings it up again. You're still sitting in webs, waiting for Artemis to show up. You're scrolling through your social media feeds, but the smell of coffee coming from the espresso bar is kind of tempting. You could go and get yourself a coffee if you want, but you are also getting food later. Uh, get coffee or you don't need it. Hmm. Let's not do it, because I don't want to mess up our date with Artemis. Of the characters we've found so far, I kind of like Artemis so far. I like their vibe. Um, so let's say we don't need it, because I don't want to mess anything up with this date. Uh, you're going to get food anyway. Might as well save your money while you're ahead. You can always get coffee later, especially since you're around here so often. Artemis shows up five minutes later, breezing into the coffee shop with that ever-present tra uh, trail of wing dust floating behind them. Hello. Alien, hey, sorry for being late. You're not that late. I've only been waiting here for like 10 minutes. You stand up. Artemis looks down at you. You always forget how short you uh, feel next to them. Um, all of their height is in their legs and it makes you feel rather small despite your best efforts. Okay, so where are we going? The both of you begin to head out. Brew is out of the cafe, wiping down some tables and both you and Artemis wave goodbye to her as you walk out of the building. She waves back. The autumn air is crisp and cool when you step outside, and the sun is shining in full force, only occasionally obscured by puffy clouds drifting around the sky. It's perfect weather for walking. The restaurant is called Cilantro. It's only a couple- oh, it's only a couple blocks away. Hopefully you're not adverse to walking. I walk most places, so it's cool with me. I don't have a car, you know. Artemis looks at you for a second, then grins a little. Oh, me neither. Never learned to drive either. <laughs> uh, never learned to drive? I know, I know, I'm like, grown. You'd think that I would know how, but I honestly don't see the point or the appeal. Plus, I don't think I can be trusted behind the wheel. <laughs> you laugh. You're trying to keep up with Artemis as they walk. Their legs are long, and so is their stride. You're almost struggling to walk alongside them. At least you're aware of it. Right? I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> They're obviously joking because the smile that tugs at their lips is present. Then, oh, because the smile that tugs at their lips then is so crooked and dorky that you can't help but smile a bit yourself. I'm proud of you too. Big steps. How about you? Why don't you have a car? I can't drive either, to be honest. I never really saw the need or I can't afford a car. Um, let's say I never really saw the need. <coughs> Ooh. Excuse me. There's a decent public transportation system here and everything's in walking distance too, so I don't mind much. So, so economical. They're grinning at you in a way that you don't exactly know how to read it, and it kind of makes you want to laugh. Don't patronize me. I'm not being patronizing, I'm being serious. The corner of their mouth twitches up and you see them struggle to keep from laughing. You sock them in the arm lightly. Oh my god, look, <laughs> look at their expression. This is so flirty. You're not, you are not being serious. Stop pulling faces in to keep from laughing. You're gonna make me start laughing and my laugh is not cute. Artemis squints at you then, peering over the frames of their glasses. I've heard you laugh like three times today alone. They pause. The crooked smile they gave you makes your chest warm. It's a pleasant feeling. I think you have a nice laugh, but I think I'm biased. You're definitely biased. I sound like a horse. A nice horse. 
You and Artemis playfully banter back and forth until you get to the restaurant. You can't lie, it's nice. You haven't been able to talk to anyone but Odina like this in a long time. The small talk you and Artemis share as you walk to the restaurant is comfortable. They're really easy to talk to, which is awesome. You're just glad the awkwardness that typically comes from hanging out with people for the first couple times isn't there. Artemis talks to you like they've known you for years. Okay, so the restaurant is just right here. The two of you turn a corner and cross the street, and then Artemis skips in front of you and leads to the storefront. They hold the door open for you. They usher you in with an excited wave of their hand. Thank you. You're welcome. The restaurant is a bit chilly inside and you feel goosebumps begin to break out on your arms. Aside from the temperature, the establishment seems pretty empty this time of day. There's only one person ordering at the counter and the other three employees on the floor are just milling about talking to each other. It's a cute place though, all decorated in whites and blacks and browns. Pop music Safi plays over the speakers. Okay, I know it doesn't look like much, but I swear this is one of the best places in town. I trust you. It's bad enough, I'm gonna hold it against you for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Artemis laughs, their eyes squinting into crescent moons. Sure, sure, I hope that's not going to be the case. You know it won't be since you're not very picky when it comes to food, but it's still fun to tease them. The two of you hop in line. The person in front of you is still ordering, so it gives you a chance to look over the menu before deciding what you want to get. They have a lot of different options, but a couple of choices stand out to you. What do you want to get? Hmm. Whatever Artemis is getting, cilantro, lime, rice and beans, mushroom pesto pasta, chipotle mayo, veggie burger. Ooh. I guess I would probably go for the mushroom pesto pasta. That sounds and looks really good, but I kind of want to see what Artemis is getting. So we're going to get whatever Artemis is getting. I don't know what to get. What are you getting? Artemis gazes down at you. It looks like they weren't expecting you to ask. They shift their eyes back to the menu. Oh, I always get the same thing whenever I come here. It's huge loaded salad with apples, tomatoes, spring mix, cucumbers, carrots. It's pretty good. That sounds good, actually. That sounds good. I'll get that too then. Oh yeah, good choice. Just as you decide what you want to get, you're up next at the register. Hey, what can I get for you? I'm gonna get the loaded salad, please. The cashier nods and pitches some things into the register screen. They look at you, then slide their gaze over at Artemis, who is standing right next to you. You guys together? You always forget that people ask this question. Uh, pay for both me and Artemis? Okay, this is why we didn't get a coffee, because we're gonna pay for both us and Artemis. Let's do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're together. You can feel Artemis staring at you. You tilt your head up a little to look at them, and then smile. You don't have to do that. I can pay for mine. No, it's cool. Go ahead and order. Remember when you bought me the coffee when we first met? Consider this payback. Uh, well, if you insist. I hope we- I hope that wasn't rude. I was trying to be very- I was trying to be nice. Yeah, I insist. Artemis' uh, cheeks kind of go rosy. Their mouth quirks up at the corner shyly and they shuffle up to the register to order. They order, you pay, and before you know it, you're sitting down one of the booths waiting for your food to come out. Artemis taps the table service in front of you, effectively getting your attention. Thank you. You smile at them again. No problem. You and Artemis once again make easy small talk for the next 15 minutes and you wait for your food to be ready. Artemis is in the middle of rambling on about some sort of collection they've impulsively started when one of the employees behind the counter calls out to you. You and Artemis are the only ones in the restaurant right now. Hey guys, I got your stuff backed up and it's at the counter when you're ready. Artemis springs to their feet and quickly, so quickly that their glasses slide to the tip of their nose. You're closely behind them as they go over to the counter and peek inside the paper bag. Oh my god, it smells so good in here. Let's go before I become absolutely insane looking at everything. <laughs> Alright, let's go then. Artemis looks up at the employees behind the counter. Thank you! Thanks guys! You two have a good one. Artemis hoists the bags into their arms and steps in front of you to push the door open with their back. You softly thank them as you pass through and they nod their head at you with a smile. The two of you sort of stand outside the restaurant aimlessly for a second. So, uh, where to now? Well, I'm hungry. There's another pause. Do you want to go to the park? I remember you saying something about the park over text. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did say something about the park, didn't I? It's not too far from here, is it? No, I think it's only like uh, two and a half blocks. It's close enough. Artemis takes a moment to mull this over. They don't mull for very long because shortly after you finish speaking, they're already shaking their head. Yes, empathetically. Emphatically. Why did I say empathetically? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go. I'm sure we can find a place to sit down at the park. 
The two of you begin to walk towards the park while, with you leading the way. After a couple long seconds, Artemis starts up again about the collection they've been talking about inside the restaurant. They've been trying to collect nickels for some reason. Nickels from every year they can find. You listen to them carefully as you can direct the both of you as you can as you direct the both of you to the park. With how fast Artemis walks, and with you desperately trying to catch up despite the fact that you're the one leading the way, you two arrive at the park in no time. You entered from one of the more secluded side areas, so there aren't as many people as there typically would be. You're trekking on a thin path uh, a thick through a thick cluster of trees. You can hear the food bumping around inside the bed Artemis is carrying. They've stopped talking now, just observing the lush greenery surrounding you both as you walk along the worn trail. The trees open up into a clearing that's dotted with several unoccupied park benches. It's quiet and no one's here except for the two of you. The birds are singing in the trees surrounded after the clearing. The sky is bright and blue above you. It's so relaxing. You don't realize that Artemis is standing in the middle of the path until you've already seated yourself down on one of the park benches. You expect them to be right behind you, but when you look back, Artemis is just looking around with a bag of food in their arms, taking everything in. You good? Artemis seems to take a second to register what you just said. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I just don't think I've ever been here. It's really pretty. They're walking over now, their long legs carrying them over much faster than you ever could. It is. If it wasn't so far away from my place, I'd be here all the time. It's always so quiet. Not many people are over here on this side of the park. I like it. We should come here again. We should come here again. You find yourself liking the way they say that. You smile and pat the spot across from you at the table. Come sit. They do, setting down the bag in their arms and beginning to take out what's inside. They hand you the container that holds your food, then set some plastic utensils and napkins on top of the lid. Thank you. Artemis hums in response. They take their food out as well, then fold the empty bag down and tuck it under their container. You assume they do this uh, so that a stray breeze won't carry it away if one passes through the clearing. The two of you begin to eat in silence. The loaded salad you got is absolutely delicious and really filling too. You didn't know how hungry you actually were. After a bit, Artemis speaks. It's good? It's really good. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm just happy you liked it. Uh, the place I picked. There's another content silence. The both of you are chewing. You know, I feel like we don't know much about each other. This has you pausing. You slowly finish chewing, then small swallow before speaking. Yeah? Yeah, so let's play a game. A game? Yeah, you ask me some questions, and then I'll ask you some questions, just to get to know each other better. Hmm, okay. Sounds like a good game. I'll have to think of what I want to ask you first, though. Take your time. What do you want to ask Artemis? What do we want to ask about the band, their latest hobby, their family? Family seems a little deep for just getting to know each other. Um, because you never know. Ask about how they like the town, what they do for a living. You're done asking questions. Let's ask about what they like about the town. Let's do that first. I don't know how many questions we get, but we'll do that. Uh, the town's all right, I think. It's not huge, but it's not as tiny as it is where I'm from, which is nice. I grew up in a small town and this is like bigger than a small town, but I don't think I would ever consider it to be a city. It's a nice, comfortable size, but I think maybe someday I want to get out of here. They're quiet for a moment, sitting their fork down. I'm kind of tired of towns, you know? Everyone seems to know everyone here, and I kind of don't like that. Sometimes I think maybe I'll want to move out of here and go somewhere where no one knows who I am, where I can, like, start over, but there's so many people that I care about here. I don't think I could just leave like that. They shrug and pick their fork back up, stabbing a couple lettuce leaves in their salad. I don't know. I like it here, but at the same time, I don't. Does that make any sense? I hope that makes sense. It does make sense, Artemis. Um, let's ask about their latest hobby next. Artemis laughs out loud when you ask them this. They plop their cheek onto the palm of their hand, their expression soft. God, you know I have a kajillion hobbies. Yeah, I do know that. Damn, this is a good question. Well, I was telling you before about my new coin collection. It's kind of a mess, but I bought one of these, um, <laughs> coin collector books. Ah, oh, it's so dorky to talk about it. The two of you share a laugh. Artemis tries to hide their face with their hand. No, no, keep going. I'm interested. It's okay. It's uh, really hard to collect coins. It seems easy, right? Like all you do is find coins and put them in the coin collector book. I literally just pick up nickels out of my change at the store or whatever, and then like organize them by mint date in the book. But I've always had to stop myself from popping the coins out and using them to pay for bus fare. 
Oh my god, it's Artemis. I've already done it a couple times. My impulse control is non-existent. <laughs> I think I need to find a new hobby. Um, okay, let's ask about the band next. The band? Uh, that's a good question. Man, well, to be honest with you, it was all Colia's idea. The more you hear about Colia, the more you suspect that near everything is her idea. Um, all three of us already know how to play instruments, you know? It's just, like, happened that Colia was like, Oh yeah, guys, let's start a band for, like, fun. They laugh and shake their head, apparently uh, recalling this situation. And there's one thing you never do with Colia, and that's say no to her. Koru has always been weak-willed, so he is the first one to say yes, and I figured that it wouldn't hurt to try it out. Artemis pushes a fork full of salad into their mouth and spends a moment chewing thoughtfully. They point their fork at you when they swallowed. Uh, so far, it hasn't been bad at all. Cora and I mostly go along with whatever Colia says. She arranges the venues and the parties, and we go along with it. I love her to death, but even more so because I know for a fact Cora and I would never be able to do half the stuff she does. It's only like a small thing that the three of us do for fun and all. I'm not sure how long it's gonna last, but I'm enjoying it for now, and I think that's the most important thing. Um, okay, let's ask about what they do for a living next. Okay, this is embarrassing because I don't actually do anything. Holy cow, how are you surviving? Artemis's cheeks flush. They look up at the sky instead of looking at you. I'm really not sure. I do odd jobs and favors sometimes, like I'll paint my neighbor's siding or mow a lawn or something, but sometimes I'll help out at the library. It's more like a volunteer thing, but one of the ladies that works there really likes me for some reason and puts me on payroll, even though I work maybe like twice a week for four hours at a time. I live with two other people, so we're splitting the rent anyway, but to be honest, I'm, I'm just ghosting. Color me impressed. Don't say it like that, I feel like a freeloader. They're kind of smiling when they say it, so you suppose you didn't embarrass them too much by asking. Alright, this might be too personal, but we're gonna ask about their family. Artemis doesn't answer for a while after you ask this. You're kind of starting to panic as the silence stretches out for just a bit too long, but then Artemis speaks. I mean, they're my family. On second thought, this probably was a bad question to ask. That's what I was thinking. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Artemis shakes their head, shrugs, then moves a half cherry tomato around in the salad with their fork. It's okay. You get the feeling that it's not exactly okay. Ugh, you're making a mental note not to talk about this unless to bring it up first. Do you want me to change the subject? There's a pause uh, that lasts a bit, then Artemis nods. Thank you. All right, I'm done asking questions. Sorry, I, I figured that was not going to be a good question to ask, because you never know. Um, same with the job one. I wasn't sure if I should ask that one, but I want to read the dialogue too. Um, okay, my turn. I have one question. Only one? Artemis leans across the table towards you, their expression conspiratorial, like they're going to tell you a secret. Yeah, it's a pretty critical question, though. You're going to have to think really hard for the answer. <laughs> okay, what question? My band's going to be playing at the party later this week. Do you want to come? Absolutely! I would love to come. We're going to say absolutely. I want to be enthusiastic. Uh, any apprehension that was hidden in Artemis's face suddenly disappears as they brighten. Wait, really? Did you think I would say no? No, I will. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to come so you don't have to worry about it. Artemis's cheeks go a pretty shade of red. They smile at you, obviously a bit sheepish. They draw random shapes on the table surface with their finger. I'll, uh, I'll see you there then. I'll text you the info. You smile back at them and continue eating. Artemis watches you do so for a second, then dips their head to the side um, to hide the smile on their face. The two of you eat in comfortable silence, the sun shining down pleasantly on you. Aw, so cute. <laughs> After all your work this week, you have $5 to add to your spending fund. You now have $23. All right. We're at a house party. You haven't been to a party in what feels like forever. Standing outside the house that Artemis had given you the address to, the absolute swarm of people out on the front lawn kind of makes you woozy. You have no idea what the inside of the house is going to look like. You can hear the music from the street. Luckily, you're not alone. As always, Odina is with you and she is quite the house party connoisseur. She made sure you dress nice and currently, she's trying to tug you into the house. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Alien, come on, you can't just stand out here in the middle of the sidewalk forever. I definitely can. Come on, at this rate, you're gonna miss Artemis. You feel something twist inside your stomach. Oh, right, Artemis. That's why you're here anyway, isn't it? They asked you to come and they had been so excited when you had said yes. You really do like going to parties, but it's been so long since you've attended one that this party feels a little overwhelming. 
It's not exactly a small house and there's a lot of people that you don't know, but you're hoping that you'll have a good time. Odina seems to think that you will. Are you coming? Odina's voice snaps you out of your reverie. She tugs you at the hem of your shirt, the one she had picked out for you before you two had left the apartment. You take in a breath and let it out slowly. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Odina smiles softly at you. It's reassuring. You love her. Odina lets go of your shirt to wiggle her slender hand into yours and uh, leads you up the pathway into the open door of the house. The music is loud. Yeah, it's bumping. Oh my god. <laughs> you can feel it in the floor. There are people everywhere, standing around, uh, talking, drinking, and dancing. It's not as crowded as you thought it was going to be, but there's still a lot more than you expected. You're not even really sure whose house this is. Artemis didn't say, but it's pretty spacious. You think that you'll still have a while until Artemis's band plays, so maybe you can take a look around and see what's up. Odina hasn't wandered off too far, so you can talk to her if you want. You could see uh, if you could try and get a feel for the house. Trying to find the bathroom would also be a good idea as well. You can see if you can find a good snack in the kitchen, or you can just try and find a place to sit for a while. That'll pass the time. What do you want to do? All right, we can talk to Adina, wander around, haunt the snack table, look for a bathroom, find somewhere to chill out. I would say let's look for a bathroom. I don't know what any of these options will lead to, so, but I think that's a pretty safe option just in case we need one. After a bit, you decide you want to find the bathroom. You don't particularly need to use it right now, but you have a feeling that you have something stuck in your teeth. You're probably just being paranoid, but it doesn't hurt to uh, look to be safe. You have no clue where the bathroom is, and that is your first dilemma. Your second dilemma is that you don't have any clue where anything is in this house. Your best bet is to just amble around aimlessly until you figure out where you're going. Uh, past the main hallway is what appears to be the sitting room. It's spacious, and it seems to be where the band is going to be playing for the night of the instruments and... If the instruments and huge speakers are any indication. Uh, to your left is a staircase that leads to the second floor. It doesn't look like anyone is going upstairs, though, considering the steps are filled with people sitting, standing, and talking. You're about to run around and go back when you um, spot not one, but two people that look familiar sitting at the bottom of the stairs. You've only seen them once before, but the writhing snakes of fur hair and huge red horns aren't something you'd forget. You worm your way through the people around to get to the foot of the stairs. Kolia and Koru are leaned against each other talking and you feel a little awkward for interrupting. Uh, hey guys. Koru is the first one to look up at you, then Kolia follows, the head of several snakes staring at you straight in the eyes before she ever lifts her face. Your stomach kind of squirms. There's a silence. Koru squints her eyes, his eyes at you, several different expressions cycling on his face. Kolia is unreadable. Who are you? Okay, this is embarrassing. The back of your neck grows warm. I'm, uh... I think this is Artemis' friend. Koli is mostly talking to Koru when she says this, but she's looking right at you. They both stare at each other for a moment, then Koli addresses you, speaking a little louder. Are you Artemis' friend? I, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah, I'm Artemis' friend. I'm friends with Odina, too. Koli looks at you really hard, then. Feels like her snakes are doing the same. Um, is, is it true that Gorgons could turn people into stone? You think you're gonna be sick either way. There's another long moment, then analyzing the look on Kolia's face disappears. Then the analyzing look on Kolia's face disappears. It's instead replaced with recognition. Oh, oh, you're Alien, aren't you? You flush at the sound of your name coming out of Kolia's mouth. Yeah, I'm Alien. Kolia turns back to Koru, who's looking at you thoughtfully. It feels like the two of them are scrutinizing you. You're not sure if you like it. Um, you're the one Artemis is always talking about, huh? They talk about me? There's another silence. Cor uh, Kolia sort of nudges Koru with her shoulder, something sharp in her expression. You don't think you want to dive any deeper into this conversation. Um, I was wondering if you guys knew where the bathroom was. Oh. Oh? What is that supposed to mean? It's obvious that Kolia and Koru are in a completely different mental wavelength than anyone else at this party. It's past the stairs and to the right. Thanks. You nod your head uh, once at the two of them and promptly make your exit. Wow, that was awkward. Maybe next time you encounter them, it'll be less awkward, but then again, maybe not. Uh, talk to Odina, wander around, haunt the snack table, find somewhere to chill out. Let's go to the snack table next. I know I'm kind of neglecting Odina, but considering we're like besties and we said we love her, I kind of want to see what other dialogue options are. So we're going to go ahead and haunt the snack table. You float around the house until you find the doorway that leads to what you can assume is the kitchen. There's a couple people in here, most notably a cu cluster of people talking above the stove. Above the stove? Sto above the stove. 
by the stove. They don't pay any mind to you as you peek around the room. The kitchen island is stocked with stacks, snacks of many kinds. There are vegetable platters, charcuterie boards, and a bunch of bowls filled with chips and crackers. It looks like people have gotten to the food before you did, which makes sense, but still a lot of food is left. You don't eat anything before coming since Odina was rushing you out the house, so you shuffle over to the island and begin picking out what you want to eat. There aren't any plates, but probably to discourage people from taking food out of the kitchen, so you just start snacking. You feel a little silly, especially knowing that a group by the stove can see you acting like a grazing farm animal, but the snacks are definitely tasty and they're starting to fill you up a little. After a while, you're beginning to get embarrassed by the way you can feel the group of people behind you staring at your back as you munch. You decide to grab one more grape, then slink out of the kitchen as slyly as you can. All right, next, let's wander around, and then we can talk to Odinia, and then we'll chill out. You do a little bit of wandering around the house, trying to figure out what uh, room leads to where. It's getting a little quieter the further away you get from the living room where the music is blasting. It feels like this house is wrapping around like a maze. You're not really sure what's what. All the noise and all the people um, around definitely does not help. After going um, in what feels like circles, you end up in one of the quieter hallways. You're about to pull out your phone to see if you can text Odina and figure out where the hell she is now when someone drums their fingers on your shoulders. You violently shiver, whipping around to see who texts you. It really could be anyone since there are so many people here, but why on earth would someone... Hey, it's Artemis. <laughs> Alien. Oh, it's Artemis. You came. The smile on their face is radiant. They're really happy to see you. Honestly, you're happy to see them too. Um, listen, I know some people like are not okay with like, hu we're gonna hug them. We're hugging them. Of course I came, I wouldn't miss it. Something pleasant flickers onto their face. You open your arms for a hug. Artemis' smile grows and for a second they're everywhere. You're shorter than them, so they're bending down a little to meet you. It's only a little bit awkward, uh, but you don't think you mind. Artemis is warm. They smell like cinnamon and fresh soil, which could be an odd combination, but it's actually quite nice. You know you have their wing dust on your hand when they pull away from you, but that's another thing you don't mind either. How are you liking the party so far? I really only just got here. I was with Odina, but she vanished off somewhere. Odina is that friend of yours, right? She is indeed a very close friend of mine at that. Artemis kind of grins when you say that. Seems like she's a very close friend of everyone's. I heard Col Colia talking about her today. Yeah, oh my god, she's friends with Colia. She knows everyone. I wasn't expecting it. I was. Colia knows everyone too. It's a perfect match. The both of you share a laugh. I'm excited to see you and the others play tonight. Artemis instantly perks up, their eyes sparkling behind their glasses. Oh my god, yes. I'm excited too. You're finally going to see us in our natural element. Wait, what do you mean? You know, like, we had to tone it down a lot for the coffee shop since it's a coffee shop. Right. You'll see what I mean. This feels almost ominous. Artemis smiles at you anyway, nudges their knuckles against your shoulder. I should probably get going though. I'm going to meet up with Kolia and Koru before we start the show. Oh, I'll see you in a bit then. I'll see you. Bye, Artemis. <laughs> all right, we'll talk to Odina and then find somewhere to chill out. Odina hasn't gone very far at all. It seems like she's trying to stay around you to make sure you don't get yourself lost or something. Have you been here before? What? It's loud in here with the music combined with all the talking and laughter from the people around you. You find that your voice kind of gets drowned out. You beckon Odina closer and she uh, sidles up on you. You lean in towards her. Have you been here before? Feel silly to be shouting right in Odina's ear like this. She stares at you for a moment before registering what you said. She grins and nods her head. Oh, yeah, I have. Twice, actually. It really does feel like Odina is everywhere all the time. You're not sure how she does it, but you're more or less convinced that she personally knows everyone in town and has been to everyone's houses and everyone's parties. You suppose that being a social butterfly has its perks. Do you know whose house this is? Odina thinks for a second. You can feel the bass of the music in your stomach. After a beat, Odina purses her lips and shakes her head no. I think it's a friend of Kolia's. I've only co ever come here when Kolia's invited me. I keep hearing so much about Kolia. I swear she orchestrates everything. Honestly, yeah, she does. I wouldn't be surprised if she was orchestrating this conversation right now. <laughs> this thought kind of freaks you out. You know, it's not possible... Um, to do that in any way, but with the amount of things you hear about Colia, you don't think it's uh, too far off. It looks like Odina can see the conflict working through your expression because she looks at you, leans back, then laughs. Oh my god, you should see your face. Are you seriously believing it? Stop, it was just a fleeting thought. 
It was definitely not a fleeting thought. I know a fleeting thought from you when I see one. You change the subject before Odina can tease you anymore. How do you know Kolia anyway? You always talk about her. For some reason, this makes Odina's cheeks flush a little. She cr scratches her arm and leans back in towards you. We actually... We actually went on a date a long time ago, but it didn't work out. We're just friends now. Aww. I think that it could work out for them. You what? You had no idea that Odina was out in the dating scene. This either happened before the two of you were friends, or she never really told you about it, which feels hard to believe because Odina literally tells you about everything that happens to her at any given point. It was a low-key thing. We didn't click like that. It's nice to be your friend, though. Wow, I had no clue. When was this? Like, maybe two months ago? You guys were definitely friends two months ago. That's crazy. Well, I'm glad you two are friends. Maybe it'll work out romantically later on. This makes Odina's face go scarlet. You suspe suspect that she's thought about this at length. Maybe. I don't know. I should probably go find her and say hi. And I'm gonna get something to drink. I'll see you in a bit, okay? Okay, be safe. Time to find somewhere to chill out. Even though you enjoy coming to parties, you feel a little bit out of your element. Odina's vanished off to God knows where, and which is normal, but now you're alone in the middle of this huge party. You're not sure when Artemis is going to start playing with the band. You think that maybe your best, your best bet is going to find somewhere to sit down until Odina finds you, or until you definitely can tell that Point Pleasant has started performing. Right now, it's all just loud dance music and thumping bass. It's a bis bit disorienting. You weave through the house, ultimately arriving at the back door. It leads out to the back patio, and it looks like there are several people out here. Not many, since the evening has gotten an autumn chill, but you decide to exit the house and step outside. Doom, doom. The night is crisp and clear. It's a lot quieter out here. There's a couple sharing a cigarette against the patio rail with two small groups of people sitting on the grass in the backyard, but otherwise, you're just out here. There are a couple unoccupied patio chairs. You take a seat in one and take a deep breath of the night air. You can feel yourself relaxing already. You're sitting out on the back patio for a while. You've been scrolling on your phone and waiting for the time to pass, but you're not exactly sure how long it's been. The smoking couple has gone back inside. The group sitting on the grass haven't, and you would be lying if you said you weren't eavesdropping on their conversation a little bit. You're going through your flash pick feed when you hear, Eliane, I've been looking for you everywhere. You turn towards the patio door. Odina is leaning out of it, the music loud at her back. How? Wh why are you out here? You set your phone down in your lap as Odina comes out onto the patio. She's holding a can of what looks like hard lemonade. I just needed some fresh air is all. Oh, okay. Party too much for you? You chew on your lip. Odina settles herself down on the armrest of your chair. The whole thing tilts some. No. Odina peers at you. Yeah. Okay. A little. Odina sighs affectionately, tapping her can of lemonade against your forehead. It leaves cold droplets on your skin when she pulls it away. My bad, I shouldn't have left you alone. It's not your fault. Odina looks down at you, conflicted. Her brow is drawn tight over her eyes. No, I always end up leaving you alone at places like this. I shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. This takes you a bit by surprise. You have to admit, though, Odina does tend to leave you alone in most social situations. Makes you feel like a fish out of water, but you've never really said anything because that's just, well, that's just Odina. You've gotten used to it over time, and maybe that's not a good thing. Thanks for apologizing. I forgive you. The way Odina smiles and makes your stomach melt, you're pretty sure you could forgive her under any circumstance. Aw. There's a con content silence, then Odina speaks again. Do you want a drink? I can go and get you something if you want. Um... Let's just do water. Let's do water. Gotta stay hydrated. I'll have some water, thanks. Odina pats you on the head, then gets up from the armrest. Okay, I'll be right back. She disappears through the back door for a bit, and you're left alone again. A couple minutes later, Odina comes back onto the patio, holding a bottle of water. She settles back down onto the armrest, handing you the bottle. It's freezing cold. Thanks, Dina. No problem. You and Odina spend some more time on the patio together, talking and taking in the fresh air when you hear a voice boom over the speakers in the living room. It echoes out all of the open windows when you can hear it perfectly from outside. Odina immediately seems to forget what she's saying, and the both of you look over your shoulders to stare at the back door. How's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> you can hear the cheers from where you're sitting. Oh, it's Artemis. We should probably go in now. Yeah, probably. You're a little reluctant to leave your peak spot on the patio, but you did come here to see Artemis and the band after all. What's the point of coming to a party if you didn't dance? 
Odina leads the way back into the house. It's extremely loud and insanely packed in the living room now that Artemis, Koru, and Kulia are all set up at their instruments. There are people in the hallways, people standing on the stairs, people crammed into every nook and cranny to see the band at the back of the room. Kuli is playing a sickening bass line and Artemis addresses the crowd. Kuru is flipping his drumsticks into the air repeatedly, catching them with a practiced ease. Are you guys ready to go effing crazy? The crowd cheers again. Holy cow, you weren't expecting this energy to be like this. The coffee shop show was much different. Is this what Artemis meant when he said that he had to tone it down for webs? Uh, how much exactly did they tone it down? Because this is leagues above what they performed at the coffee shop. Artemis drums a chord on the guitar that seems to shake the room. This first song is called Harbinger. Koru counts down the song and the song starts. All gritty guitar chords and fast drums and Artemis bravely singing, uh, bravely singing voice. It's then you realize that Point Pleasant isn't alt pop. This is a sick song so far. They're effing punk rock. The performance is insane. It's aggressive and it's loud and it's every uh, noise at once turned into a single harmony. Artemis sings like their life depends on it. Polia is ethereal. Ethereal. In the background. Koru is tearing up those damn drums. Everyone is dancing. You think someone spilled something on the tops of your shoes, but there's too much going on for you to pay attention to it. After three upbeat electric songs, the band plays a slower one that you remember hearing at the coffee shop. You remember the melody and none of the words, but the way Kolia leads into Artemis's chorus has you hooked. The show lasts so long, but simultaneously and so quickly. It's a blur of music and bodies and dancing. Uh, so much, but not enough at the same time. Odina has been right next to you the whole time. You didn't even realize that she was there until everything begins to die down. When the band finally shouts thank yous to the crowd and the punk music is replaced with bumping dance playlist, it's your ears. It's like your ears are stuffed with cotton. Someone grabs your arm. It's Odina. I spilled my lemonade. You looked at her, taking a moment too long to process what she's saying. After a second of staring, it hits you. Your lemonade? She gestures at the wet tops of your shoes. Ugh, I'm sorry. Wait, no, it's okay. Let's just go get another one. But your shoes. You're not sure how many of these hard lemonades that Odina has had. You do know that she's a lightweight and you can tell that she's just a little bit more tipsy than by swimming, <laughs> by the swimming look in her eyes. You grab her by the hand but that's not holding the remains of her drink. They'll dry, come on. The two of you weave through the crowd and squeeze through the hallway that goes from the living room to the kitchen. Odina seems to know her way around the kitchen. So once the both of you arrive there, she sets to digging around the fridge across the room. It's quieter here. Not a lot of people in here either, just two or three groups lingering by the island that somehow is still stocked with food this late into the night. You stand there waiting for Odina to get done rummaging through the fridge. Alien! The sound of someone calling your name has you looking over your shoulder, eyes wide. There's a beat, then Artemis uh, bounds up to you after worming through the people standing outside the kitchen doorway. <laughs> you feel yourself perk up. Artemis, the show is incredible. Artemis looks breathless, their hair a mess around their face. Their cheeks are red with a healthy flush. You saw? Their voice is husky, deeper and rougher than it usually is, probably due to all that singing. It's nice, you think, albeit a bit uh, shyly. Yeah, of course I saw. I was there the whole time. You're effing electric. The smile that breaks their face is blinding. I'm so happy you sh saw it. God, this is just... <laughs> There's no more lemonade. You and Artemis turn to look at Odina, who's bent over at the fridge. She straightens, and you see her nearly hit her head at the handle of the freezer door. Uh, tell Odina to get something else. That's the only thing we can say. Just get some water or something. You can always buy lemonade at the way home. Odina thinks about this, then points at you like you've come up with the best idea she's heard in a while. So true, I'm holding you to that. After Odina's drink situation is sorted out, you're about to turn back to Artemis to finish the conversation when someone else walks into the kitchen. Artemis, there you are. Huh? Oh, hey. Hi, Odina. Hi. Kolia turns to Artemis, but her snakes are still peering at you and Odina. Freaky. <laughs> We're going to have to back up the instruments soon. People are going to F with them um, the longer that they're out. Okay, do you want to do that in the next 30? Next 30 sounds good. I can help. I'm not doing anything. Polia smiles fondly at Odina. Odina beams back at her. Sure, that would be great. Do you want to help Koru and I pack up some things right now? It's going to be too much work. 
Odina goes to Nob, but then side eyes you as she's asking for your permission. Right, she has to be apologizing for leaving you alone at parties. You appreciate her hesitance this time around, but this time you're with Artemis, so you think you'll be okay. You can go ahead, I'm gonna be with Artemis. Odina gives you an enthusiastic thumbs up. Okay, I'll text you in a bit. You got it. She falls into step next to Colia, and the both of them leave the kitchen, leaving you next to Artemis. What do you want to do with Artemis? Go and dance? Ask them if they want something to drink or eat. Uh, let's go and dance. Let's dance with Artemis. The music is still loud in the other room, and you can feel through the walls. It's a good uh, music, and you don't think you've had enough dancing for the night. You think that there's still more fun to be had in that area. You nudge your knuckles against the skin of Artemis's forearm. They look down at you, expression open. You want to go dance? Are you kidding? Of course I want to. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go then. You lead the way back into the packed hallway. You feel Artemis hold on to the back of your shirt as the two of you don't get separated. You go back into the living room. There's still a decent amount of people here, all of them dancing to the music. On the other side of the room, you can see Colia and Odina starting to pack up the band's things. The crowd seems to mold around the two of you as you begin to dance. The music thumbs around, thrums around your body. Dance closer to them or dance alongside? I think you know what I'm gonna choose. <laughs> Artemis is several steps away, but you beckon them over with a wave of your hand. Come closer. You have to shout over the music. They don't seem to understand to what you said with all the noise and move closer to you to hear you better. My plan is working. <laughs> you can't help but smile to yourself. What? Nothing, you already did it. They look at you amused. They've been kind of stepping from one side to the other, but when you don't say anything else, they start to dance. It's not anything special really, but the way they close their eyes and lift their arms up above their head is so... You don't really know how to describe it, but you watch them move with a fond feeling in your chest. The two of you are close enough to almost step on each other's toes, but somehow Artemis manages to expertly go around your feet with every move they make. Touch them or don't touch them? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know what the boundaries are here, but we've been really flirty and we hugged them earlier in the night. Hmm, what do we want to do? I don't want to like overstep. Also touch them could mean anything. It, ju it could just mean like dancing with them. Hmm, let me save just in case this goes really bad because I like Artemis. All right, we're gonna try. Hopefully it just means like a nice like shoulder touch like you're dancing together, like a high school dance where it's a little awkward. <laughs> you carefully reach your hand out to brush your fingers against Artemis's waist. They open their eyes to look down at you and you meet their gaze. Everyone is dancing, bodies molding around the both of you as the music thumps through the room. Under the lights, you see their cheeks grow red, but they don't say anything. You can feel the warmth through their shirt. I don't know what to do. Should we stop? I don't know. Your hand slides down the small of their back and you feel a fuzziness of their wings against your knuckles. You look at them, their glasses have slipped down their nose. The two of you are still dancing, only closer now. You make an intentional shuffle forward. They're so close that you can see the steady rise and fall of their chest. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. They're not, they haven't given a sign other than blushing, which could be good or... Mm. Your fingers trace the base of Artemis's spine. They shiver against you. You move towards them again, the closest you can get. Your chest's brushing. Artemis flushes even harder. Okay? You say it quietly and your words are nearly drowned out by the music around you. But you're close enough to each other that you know that they heard you. Their hands sort of hovering next to your waist. There's a pause, then Artemis nods firmly, dipping their head a little. <laughs> okay. You can touch me if you want. Artemis swallows. Something flicks across their face, but you can read it. Uh, you can't read it before their expression changes. They evade your eyes, instead looking down at their hands. Their hands come awkwardly to rest above your hips, but not quite your waist. It's something, though. The shy pink tint of their cheeks is quite rewarding. You think you might be able to feel the drumming of their heartbeat through your shirt if you concentrate on it enough. The two of you dance against each other for the length of two more songs. It's almost ten minutes. Artemis moves a bit stiffly the whole time, obviously riddled with nerves, but it's nice. They're warm and they smell good, like pine and cherries and spiked punch. Hopefully they're okay with this. That's the only thing, is like that it's nerves and not like uncomfortableness. I didn't want to make Artemis uncomfortable. 
You pull back after letting uh, your touch linger for the briefest second. Artemis looks down at you, something unreadable crossing their face. You notice that you haven't been able to read their facial expressions for the past 15 minutes. The room is starting to feel really stuffy. Maybe it would be better if you moved somewhere with less people. Can we go outside? You have to say it loudly in order for Artemis to hear. There's a beat, but then Artemis runs their hand through their hair and nods. You nod back at them, turning your heel and trusting that they'll follow. Do we do the wrong thing? It's so much quieter once we get outside. Just like before, you can still hear the music through the walls of the house, but it's fainter. The groups of people that were sitting on the grass before aren't here anymore, but there's a new group playing a small game of beer pong. Someone must have dragged out a table onto the lawn close enough to the patio that the porch lights still illuminated the game. You settle down in the patio chair you had been sitting in about an hour ago. Artemis drags another chair from the other side of the patio over to you, then plops down in it. The two of you sit in silence for a while. The autumn air is cool. The night sky is clear. It's so much less stimulating than the entire party and you appreciate that. It was a good idea to take a step back out here. Suddenly, Artemis speaks. Hey, um, thanks for coming out tonight. You look over at them. The warm patio lights cast a shadow across their face. Of course, I had a lot of fun. Artemis goes quiet for another moment, tracing some random shape on their thigh. I just... I, um... I appreciate it. Uh, not many people like to come to these shows and stuff. My, uh... My ex didn't even like coming to them, and... I don't know. It's just nice that you're here. Oh, well, I'll come to all your shows as long as you want me to. Artemis looks at you then. Their brow is drawn tight over their eyes. They're biting their lips so hard that the surrounding flesh is going white. I would like that. Aww. Okay, I promise. You stick out your pinky, they stare at it. After a beat, they crack a smile, exhaling a breath and shaking their head as if they're trying to clear their mind. They lift their hand, sticking out their own pinky to hook around yours. You squeeze their pinky firmly before letting go. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. <laughs> After a busy work week, you have $25 to add to your spending fund. You now have $48. All right, it's another week. Um, and I'm going to leave this second episode here. I hope you guys are enjoying this. We have a nice little romance going on with Artemis. Uh, they're very sweet. I'm enjoying this game so far. I hope you guys are too. If you are, be sure to leave a like down on this video and let me know down in the comments. Um, but on that note, I'm going to say farewell, friends. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, we're not alone out there, and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>